So this is the Riverside Quarry, 1995, first time I saw it. And this is the same place in 2010. As you can see the quarry's been cleaned right out. It's the first time in 80 or 90 years anyone's seen inside it. And the first thing that turned up were about another 30 of these famous tree stumps, the tree stumps of the oldest trees. But the most amazing thing is the bottom of the quarry is exposed, probably for the first time because when it was being quarried, the photographs show that the quarry floor was covered in rubbish, bits of rock, equipment. And each of those dimples is the base of one of these ancient fossil trees. You can see the soil in which the trees were growing. So the construction company were pretty keen that we got out of there as soon as possible. To help us do that they cleaned the quarry floor with pressure hoses. They even cleaned up the geological section that I had to measure up. Each of the little orange cones is the base of a tree. But we ran out of cones so not all the trees have cones in them. is Bill and Frank cleaning up around the edge of the site. So to make the map they laid out a grid of string across the floor of the quarry and then took photographs of each of the grid rectangles using a remote control camera up on a boom. Bill then stitched all the photographs back together into a grid and drew over it and then took it back to the quarry and ground truthed every square, every grid square on the map. I'm all done as far as at seven. This is seven, right? I can't read anything with seven either. So I've got all of those that I can take. And that was done. Frank and Linda measured up a lot of the features on the quarry floor, so we got a lot of statistical data. You can see Bill in the background wondering what to do with another stump that's turned up. By the time he was done, he'd done only a bit of the quarry floor, but he'd done at least 1,300 square metres, which is the biggest bit of Devonian forest that's ever been mapped in any detail. So the famous trees are these Cladozalopsids, the Gilboa tree. Here's the base of just one of them. The tree actually sat in the depression. But you can see all around it thousands and thousands of roots. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. This is actually a tree which has fallen over. So down towards us are the roots at the bottom and then the tree is stretching diagonally across the screen there from bottom left to top right. The most amazing things were these rhizomes, completely unexpected, long 15 centimetre diameter rhizomes crawling across the floor of the quarry between and around the Eospermatopsis trees, probably growing up into them. You can see the scars of perhaps the roots coming out the bottom or maybe the branches which are the bit of the Pregymnosperm we know about. So this one's CB1, 15 centimetres across, about 4 metres in length it bends around in a nice arc around here towards that hole but it's straight for about two meters down here Frank's going to try and collect this part here to go with the counterpart right next to the trunk are 
two lovely eospermatopterous spaces just right there. Very un I wouldn't be at all unhappy if these guys just sort of stopped and started, had a front top end and a bottom end. Maybe leaving a tiny footprint. You might or might not recognize. Depending on how big they get. Maybe a reasonable footprint. Frank is modifying the map as it, as it goes. So that was maybe the Big discovery, that's the thing we didn't expect to see. We found just one of these arborescent lycopsids. This is the trunk again, it's about 14-15 centimetres diameter with little leaf skulls all over it. Well, you guys gotta mark out what you want me to try. You might be able to just trim that and then pop it out. Here comes the rain. do anything to keep that map dry. So if you want to see how the forest turned out, have a look on the front cover of Nature. It's out on March the 1st.